Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the On Time On Target Morning Brief. We are here at the Bellagio in at the conservatory here in Las Vegas. We'll be coming at you live uh, all week long. So the, obviously, if you've been to the foyer of the Bellagio, they always have this set up in accordance with whatever the theme of the season is. So if you look back over here, you're going to see a big uh, red throne. Over here, you can see a big uh, carriage. So everything's all set up for uh, Christmas, so it's pretty cool if you ever get a chance to see it. I've got a great show for you today. Uh, we're going to talk about the Google outage this morning. I don't think I've ever heard of Google being down, but I went to uh, Gmail this morning and they're like not available. Like really? I can't even imagine that. Uh, we're going to talk about that. And then of course, we're going to talk about cybersecurity firms because that obviously if, uh, if Google's getting hacked, you know, the Treasury uh, reported that they had some hacks this morning and you had FireEye getting hacked last week. So what's going on in the world? Let's go ahead and dig into that and get started with the show right now. Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time, On Target Morning Brief. As you can tell, we are not in our normal location. As you saw from the intro, which uh, that will, if you're listening live, you didn't see that, but you will later on the replay. Uh, there'll be an intro coming into this, uh, that we are here in Las Vegas, so pretty fired up about that. And it's a little bit early out here. Uh, we got a great show for you today. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, if you are saw in the news already this morning, Google uh, got hacked. It's like last week we had a cybersecurity firm get hacked. Uh, then this morning we wake up, we have the Treasury Department, the Commerce Department faced attacks from, we think it's the Russians or they're kind of the auto default blame, right? Uh, I'm not sure we know who it is yet. But also, yeah, Google was down when I got up this morning about an hour and a half ago. Uh, the best I can tell is everything Google related was offline for about 20 minutes, which is literally like the end of the world. Uh, YouTube down for 20 minutes, Gmail down for 20 minutes. That's crazy. So kind of good it didn't happen in the middle of the day, but it did happen. So we're going to talk about cybersecurity firms today, how you can play that and capitalize on that thesis. All right, make sure you have your chat window open and your uh, Q&A window open as well. Uh, standard disclaimer applies. This is a financial education presentation. You have to do all of your own due diligence before you act upon anything that you hear today. All right, welcome to December 17th, Monday. Grow our money, protect our money, and live off our money, our objectives. We're not going to talk about safe investing through the election. That was a long time ago. We're going to talk about cybersecurity. Uh, and then the question of the day, if you did happen to see this in the news, uh, cybersecurity misspelled, but I'm not going to fix it there, is what is quadruple, we'll just leave it at quad witching hour, uh, which is the uh, end of this week. It happens once every three months. So if you see that in the news, we're going to talk about what exactly that is and then uh, go from there. All right, our flow. It's going to be long, short, short, open, short, long. We're going to start with the market review. Futures are up nicely, almost a percent, actually. So pretty fired up about being on the road and making some money. I like it. And uh, then we're going to talk about uh, the headline reviews. We've got some vaccine news uh, out there that we'll talk about. It's starting to roll out here in the U.S. Uh, FedEx and UPS to describe what they're going to do as far as getting the vaccines out to the people and how to deal with a super cold storage, that sort of thing. Uh, so it sounds like I have a pretty good plan together. I, I like it. I'm liking everything I hear. All right, for long-term investments, again, it will be <coughs> cyber, C-I-B-R, which you may, if you're with me, you already probably seen this pop up in your portfolio already. Um, but yeah, it's a cybersecurity ETF. It's going to contain names like Palo Alto, uh, FireEye, Zscaler, Okta, Cloudflare, you know, kind of all the favorites, but you're going to get them all instead of just being into like... Uh, Palo Alto is kind of my favorite and fire. I was, of course, until, you know, if they get hacked, that's not cool. Um, then we're going to go through some short-term trades. I already put them in, in the window if you're in here early enough. Uh, so we do have a bunch of longs. We don't really have any shorts to look at with the market up uh, about um, almost a percent already. For contingencies, reach out to me at uh, tech support at steve at ototnow.com. All right, let's go over and take a look at where we've been. I'm on a slightly different display this time. So I don't know if it's going to... Uh, look the same to you, but I will get feedback uh, a little bit later. Uh, I'll reach out to one of y'all for that. Okay, this is a standard, um, get rid of me here. I'm going to go off camera. <coughs> get rid of the standard, or this is a standard S&P 500 from left to right. It's almost a year, except it's uh, kind of scrunched down there. Um, but really what you're looking at is that the far right here is we've had kind of flat line and we had some up moves. We're kind of flat line and we're at that 360 level, which would be honestly great. If we finish the year at there at the level we're at, that will be fantastic. Uh, in my book, we'll put 2020 in the books. We'll slap some high fives and say, 
Good thing we didn't sell in March. So uh, it turned out to be a heck of a year. Uh, I don't expect a huge move going in. If anything, we might go long here if we have good vaccine initial results, as well as some stimulus coming out. All right, when we look at what last week looked like, <coughs> SPY up there this time, this is your five-day chart. Your blue, your dark blue is your uh, market when the market's open. So yeah, Wednesday was down kind of big, Thursday, Friday, kind of flattish, had some optimism going into the close on Friday and have a lot of optimism going into uh, today. So pretty excited to see where it holds. For our short-term trades, we'll get back to them in a minute, but you can see uh, that the screens, I only have two screens that I can share it out with you today, or at least that's what I'm seeing. Uh, so I'm only, I'm only gonna use the one that you see, uh, CVAC, CVAC, that'll be long. And then BCLI will also be a long name that we will take a look at. All right, let's check out some headlines out there. We're gonna go to cnbc.com and <coughs> take a look at these futures. Still got that annoying cough, I know. Allergies, not the COVID. All right, so everything's refreshed there. You're seeing everything. Uh, NASDAQ's up half a percent, the Dow and the S&P up close to uh, a percent there. And we're up even higher, even earlier. Uh, go across Europe, Europe's in the green across the board. Uh, you have uh, Germany up over a percent. So that's always nice. As far as Asia, it's split a little bit with Hong Kong down, everything else up. These are our numbers from Friday. Dow actually finished in the green Friday. Uh, the S&P and NASDAQ came clawing back, but didn't quite make it all the way into the green. All right, as far as bonds out there, closing in on that 1%, we're at 0.925% on the 10-year. Again, that's the only one I really look at. Uh, same on this oil pain here. The only thing we really look at is the <coughs> $47 on oil, up a percent, 1.3% on Friday. So we'll take that. Uh, we always like that when it's trending in the right direction. As far as gold, it was mixed, not much going on there. And then uh, Bitcoin that we're, we did the thing on it Friday. Um, yeah, Bitcoin, 0.3% up over 19,000 again. So we'll keep an eye on that. Okay, let's go ahead and get back to the main page here. We're going to take a look at some headlines. <clears throat> All right, so uh, how's the vaccine shipping? Uh, Fred Smith from FedEx was online um, either this morning or last night. I don't remember exactly when the interview was, but talking about the kind of the supply chain layout, uh, FedEx and UPS are working together uh, and they split up the number of states that they're going to be able to get these things to. So that's pretty cool uh, to have the two uh, big boys in the space, if you will, um, working together, make sure you can get out to everybody. They talked in depth about how you're going to keep it cold until it finally gets uh, delivered. So overall, pretty solid plan. And I know there's, you know, from those of us that spent our life in the military, military is basically logistics and who can do logistics better, to be honest. Uh, it looks like we have a pretty solid logistical plan um, to, to roll this thing out. So pretty excited about that. Okay, let's see, cyber attack on US Treasury, we already talked about that. Here's your Google widespread outage. Yeah, it was all gone. Uh, that was interesting to say the least when I, when I tried to access it this morning. Um, you know about Apple's new fitness uh, app that uh, it's a competitor to Peloton. Peloton has, been, has taken a hit uh, a little bit on that, but they're also, um, they're going into the NASDAQ 100 uh, on December 21st, that's when you know Tesla's going into the S&P. They're going to the NASDAQ 100. So again, they're going to probably shoot up from there. I have a little bit of it, none personally, but in the book, uh, folks are, that like Peloton, I have no problem with that stock. I, I don't view Apple as a direct competitor there. Um, I think Apple is more of a um, to the masses kind of thing. And Pel Peloton's more of your uh, super luxury, if you will. <clears throat> okay, uh, 401 plans, green investment options. I will tell you that one of the uh, funds that I've been using this year, and if you're with me, you have it in your portfolio already, is QClean, um, which is a green energy fund. And, and this is a spot on comment that in your 401k, if you want to invest in clean energy or EV uh, being electric vehicles, um, <clears throat> you really can't do it. There, there's generally not those options. You just have, you know, your large cap, small cap. Um, so if you do have that option, get on you, but you're right. For the most part, you cannot be specific and do themes, uh, which is what we do with our money, which is another good reason to roll over your old 401ks to your IRA where you can take advantage of that stuff. Okay. <coughs> Tesla going in on Friday, the S&P 500. We also have the triple witching hour, uh, which is, excuse me, quadruple witching hour. It happens four times a year. Volume's generally heavy on Friday. So expect a lot of things uh, to move. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Stimulus maybe uh, coming this week. We'll see. You would think so, right? 
I don't, I cannot see us dorking around into 2021 without stimulus, but uh, we may. Um, Tesla shutting down for 18 days for some production there. So obviously that's uh, even when the big boys are starting to take a knee, uh, you know, it's starting to affect everything out there. Okay, that's it from the headlines. Let's go ahead and take a look at our theme of the day, which again is cybersecurity. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so here's your uh, CIBR uh, that you have out there and you can see it's kind of run up pretty good. You have all the way back to the, uh, to the left here um, is your March lows down at what is that 22? Hadn't quite doubled from there. I do think there's a lot of more room to run and what I really think is the player um, that you are, uh, you know, forms are gonna be for, forced into buying cybersecurity software. I mean, I pay about 1500 a year just for my few devices in my house and that I take on the road. So they have an entire cybersecurity program on them. Um, but I think, you know, everybody out there are going to, uh, <coughs> uh, <laughs> going to, um, uh, you know, have to buy these things. Yes, I see your, I see the comment in the chat. I, when, since I'm on the road, I can, I don't have the chat up. I just see it a, a notification there. So yeah, uh, if you know me, I don't really gamble. I, I play poker, which really isn't gambling because it's not gambling if the same people win all the time, uh, which is pretty much the case. So anyhow, my take on that. So yeah, good, good luck buying your casino stocks there, uh, Predator. Have fun. All right. What I do want to show you with the cybersecurity thing though, is when you're when you go to research an ETF, so this is again, a little bit of financial education, uh, you aren't going to be satisfied by all this, right? Because half of these, since it's a fund, you don't have all these ratios to look at and nerd out on. All you have is past performance, which, you know, that only tells you exactly what happens, uh, what has happened. So if, if, unless you have a time machine, this isn't necessarily the best indicator of what's going forward and just a little bit of dividend information. So that's literally crap, right? As far as to make your decision on. So what you need to put in your bookmark this or uh, you know memorize, memorize it, it's pretty easy to remember, is at etf.com and then slash um, whatever your fund is. So if you just put etf.com slash CIBR, hit enter, it'll you know do its thing to, to come up to this, but <clears throat> to this display, but with etf.com, and then once you're in it, you can search the uh, search tab here. So if you're doing your, uh, your, your due diligence, this will tell you exactly the fund description. It tells you the highlights and you can kind of read through what, what exactly is in this. But when I go to find best of breed, I pull up the primary ETFs and I surf through all of this stuff, which is probably important to somebody. It's not really important to me. I like to look at the number of holdings, make sure it's not you know 4,000. If it's 4,000, then I'm just not even gonna deal with it because it's not focused enough for me. There's no chance to out at alpha. Um, and then I make sure they're true. Okay, it's software and IT, you know, there's a defense that's probably like a Palantir or something, uh, you know, in communication. So uh, there's mostly it's fairly focused. But here's what I'm looking at is the top 10 holdings. And that's where when you look at, you know, I want to get focused because I want to achieve more alpha is the get in there and find best of breed. Well, clearly this fund thinks this is its largest holding. Now, sometimes this can be dated by a few weeks or 30 days or 90 days. I don't know the exact math of how often this is updated. Um, but it does tell you at least what they were thinking uh, is best of breed, not only from a long term, but, but also incorporates valuation. Like I would say Palo Alto is best of breed, but sure, it has run up in price. Um, so that's why they own less of it, because they think these have more outperformance opportunity. Uh, so again, when you're trying to outperform the market, that's where you will kind of want to fish in this pond uh, to be able to, uh, to have the best of breed. Uh, out there. So there's there's tabs that here that'll have all kinds of things that uh, you may or may not care anything about, but at least that's there and I wanted to show that to you. Okay, let's take a look at uh, switch hats now um, over to, let's see, can't do that actually. So the number one short, I didn't write these down, there it is. Okay, what we're gonna look at today is uh, CVAC long, this is a, I don't have my Schwab display because I couldn't get Kramer to stop talking. That's why we were, we were dismayed, dismayed, uh, um, delayed, excuse me, maybe dismayed. Um, so I, that's what took me, I had to kill his voice. Um, but here you can see CVAC, so you don't have the normal information about volume, uh, but it does have the volume going in uh, this morning. Uh, the headline associated with CVAC, and this is a long 
uh, if you want to trade this again, you can use your IRA, is that it is it came up here and peaked. It's kind of dropped off, but it's going long today because it's got some new vaccine uh, phase two and phase three trials underway. So you have your heavy hitters, right? You have your Pfizer, your BNTX, you have your AstraZeneca, you have your um, Moderna. Those are all the names that have the vaccines out. This one's kind of that player that's uh, late to the party, but why I think it's a good, not only a trade for today is because they got the new FDA trial approvals, it, but long-term you may consider this because these things are gonna get bought. You know, Every vaccine they can produce is gonna get bought, right? Um, so another way to, uh, to play this, so that'll be our number one, is uh, CVAC, the number two out there. <clears throat> get rid of the ads. The only downside to FINVIS is, is the ads and you can't pay for them to go away. The second one is BCLI. This is an interesting company that I'm sure you've never heard of. Uh, Brainstorm Cell Therapeutics. And again, this is a long as well. So you have basically, uh, it was up here, it promised the world, it's fallen down to below $5. So uh, I do like that from a trading perspective. Ads, ads, okay. <laughs> Trying to kill these, keeping up with them. Uh, they are in the news long exactly for um, an ALS phase three trier, trial that, uh, that they got to see if they can, um, which expanded this access program. So more patients that if you participated in the trial, you can now hop in and take the drug a full time. So uh, that was kind of the, uh, the headline out of this morning and you don't see it here, but it is gapping up. I think it's close to $5. So we'll see that when we switch over to our um, other screens here for trading. If you insist on taking something short, AstraZeneca did a merger um, with Alexion Pharma. Alexion Pharma is up 30%, AstraZeneca is down 6%. So again, not displayed here, but everybody thinks they paid too much for it. So that would be a reason to uh, short into this. Or the last short I'll have for you before we switch screens is Space, which is Virgin, Virgin Galactic. Uh, they announced, they had a negative announcement. They cut a space flight, flight short. Um, so again, you know that market stocks tend to move down uh, a lot faster than they move up. So it's a little easier. And our short on Friday ended up being like a 15 hour short. Uh, once we went off air, it sold off all day after the CEO quit. So this would be a stock you could short into, even though it's kind of a famous name and a strong name performance wise, they have a negative headline. So going to sell off today. All right, let's go over to TD Ameritrade, and we will get set up for our screens. So you should be seeing three screens or three and a half, at least that's what I'm seeing. <coughs> so we will not use that right screen at all. Um, and then my arrows, I can draw a little better on this screen, but what I can't do is zoom back out, um, or I don't know how it maybe is a better thing. So I'll have to troubleshoot that later today. So not really able to zoom back out to see where we were. Um, but with CVAC, you see there's plenty of volume uh, going in. Uh, currently sitting here at the 126 price points, so you're looking at probably a, you know, a dollar um, stop. And then down here with this $5 one, you have to let it open, let the uh, volume come in, probably looking at a 10 cent stop. <clears throat> okay, welcome everyone to the On Time On Target, the play of the day. You have three screens in front of you today. You On the far left screen, you have the SPY which is the S&P 500, that is a one minute chart you're looking at. And that tells us that, you know, it's kind of trending up uh, this morning into the market. And there's been kind of flat line into the open, you know that the futures are up. So that's why we're looking at a couple of longs today. Uh, our first long is in that middle screen, it's called CVAC, CuraVac uh, is the name of the company, it has a vaccine phase two and three trial that it just passed. So expecting the stock to jump on that. There's, there's our opening bell. Uh, looking at about a dollar stop. And then the uh, BCLI is the brain, just blanked on the name, uh, Brainstorm Cell Therapeutics, which has an ALS phase three trial, uh, which I like. So we need to wait for a little bit of volume. Actually got quite a bit of volume there. Move this up a little bit. So 40,000 on the volume there. Uh, this will be a 10 cent stop. So this is the one I'm gonna take. Um, look at, hopefully we'll get a better entry, but if it gets straight up to 10, I'll probably just take it right at uh, 10 since low of the day is 497. Actually, let's take it long at 507. So just making a note to myself, don't take it yet. Let, uh, let it kind of chill for a second. But if it hits 507, we'll take that long. And again, they, we're going up uh, 10 cent stop. So it'll be 517, 527, and 537. And it was already at 549 this morning. Uh, so it's very realistic possibility of, uh, of getting that. It's already at $8. 
I tell you what, I like it so much. Let's take it here at 505. So let's get into the trade. Might even had a better entry there if you uh, delayed for just a second. Um, so that's 495 is our low of the day. Uh, so let's put that as our stop. So make sure you have that in. Um, so 505, you can still take it here if you missed it. So 515 will be our 1R, 525 will be our 2R. And then 535 is going to be our exit. So have all that all uh, set up. You don't need the R set up. You just need the uh, um, bounce yourself out as a stop limit at 495 if it drops down there. Otherwise, we're going to exit it at 535. I wouldn't keep this one like I did on Friday. Um, I don't, you know, it's not sexy enough of a headline like CEO resigning out of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> that's why I kept a third of the shares on on Friday. Here, I do think uh, think that once it gets going uh, going into the green here. That it's going to have some uh, some good legs on up, so we'll keep an eye on that as uh, it's kind of teasing us down here with the low of the day. If it breaks that, yeah, we'll probably get bounced out. Um, but don't uh, don't try to be tricky. If it drops below the low of the day, it could get all the way down to like 480. So nice tight stop. If we go down an R, we go down an R. Okay, let's look over here. I'll zoom in just a little bit on this. Yeah, that was too much, and I can't go back. So fantastic. Um, all right, but we can keep a, keep a little closer eye on that. Okay, as far as the CVAC, from 26 to 170, it's moved up $2 already. I wouldn't take this one long unless it comes back down in, in to the 125, 26 range, and then you could look at taking it long. Um, but other than that, uh, I would not look, I would not take it here because I just don't think it's, it's got another uh, three to four bucks out of it. All right, let's take a look at the market. We can zoom in on that because we don't need to go back. <clears throat> Coming in a little bit, you can see the SPY here in the upper left, 0.62%. So, uh, so it's in the green, it's kind of fading a little bit. So, all right, we're still good on uh, low of the day. It did uh, one blip down there to 497 versus 498. So again, be, uh, be patient with your trade, but be ready to exit and do the, uh, the right thing there. All right, as far as... We need to go to another screen for a second. So bear with me. care of something maintenance issue there okay let's get over to the main screen so trade is just sitting there hope pull it up on another screen and be ready to go or get ready to bounce out of it because i'm going to move on to take a look at some other things actually we can look here um let's see azn was a short see if this one actually worked to the downside so yeah opened at 50 60 only about 30 cents though uh, but still kind of selling off uh, there we go we're out of the trade so that is a big x on our trade so down one r uh for a monday there all right let's look at uh, some other things here and this so astrazeneca went down the other one was space spce and that's where uh, too strong of a name right sold off and then uh right back long so uh, we'll see where space ends up today. Some other long names we're looking at out there is uh, Alexion was the one, the company that AstraZeneca bought. It was up 30% pre-market. It is not really moving in relation to how much it's jumped up there. So I would not touch it here. And the last one, a little bit interesting. It's a satellite company. The satellite nav navigation called Gillat, if I'm saying that right, which I don't know that I am, um, they were gapping up. They got a huge contract to put uh, satellite stuff on a whole bunch of uh, uh, Navy, you know, boats, sort of things like that. So they got a pretty, pretty big contract out of there. 
Um, they're not a big name, but so that's kind of a huge deal for him. So, so them, so that's why they're gapping up. Okay. All right. We let's leave here and take a look at what's going on in the real world. All right. RVV is up 32%. Again, that's Revive Therapeutics. We talked about that on Thursday. Hopefully you have a piece. Um, LKYSF up 31%. It's also a psychedelic name. Uh, Mind Medicine, that was another one. Well, we talked about all five of these, right? So they're all up uh, 11% up to 42%. So kind of crazy in the uh, psychedelic uh, world. Uh, CLS is quick stream. We also talked about, I think literally those might've been the six we talked about for uh, Penny Stock Day. Kind of funny. Uh, SPNV is Supernova. That's a SPAC that's coming out. And I forget on the guy's name, but a famous investor um, that is running that SPAC. So that is doing well. Uh, Moderna vaccine name, take two interactive video games do well during um, Christmas. Uh, laser is Luminar. And let's take a look at this chart. It sold off hard. So I bought a bunch of it uh, late Friday afternoon. Uh, if, you, if it showed up and you didn't know what it was. Um, so it dropped 20%. I think this is, is this right. Thirty-two down to twenty-eight. That's not quite. Oh, it's, it went from the previous close. That's what it was. So it closed here at thirty-four, and it went down all the way to twenty-eight. So I think that was like eighteen, nineteen percent. Um, so anyhow, I started. I bought some around here, so it's up from that point. Uh, but you see, it's kind of uh, fading in here today. So we'll see. I do like it long term. There's another name out there, VLDR, which is the secondary to laser. But these are the light detection and ranging companies that go in the inside of the self-driving. Uh, technology kind of inside the box sort of stuff um so if you you know if the ev makers have run up too much on you this is a good way to do it like a, der a derivative uh investment in lazr and vldr all right let's see here let's look and see what's in the red that's an option up top uh neo's in the red northwest bio not very much look there's only what 15 20 names in the reds and hardly in the red at all so i'm not really worried about that there's luck in representing uh he likes to lead the uh the red column um but still above four dollars so not all that worried about Luckin, but certainly not where it was going there for a while okay it's not above four dollars it's 395 but we'll keep an eye on it still uh still holding it out for a long-term investment on Luckin. All right, let's go back to our trading window and see what, if this went back up. Yeah, I figured it would. So we end up, you know, this is, it's all part of it. And you have to stay true to the math, but getting knocked out of the trade by a penny uh, can be irritating, especially when this goes on to, you know, 535 and hits your exit point. But uh, we shall see, and you can't cry over that. You simply move on. All right, let's go to, let's, Go to stand by one. Need to fix something real quick. Close. All right. Okay, I'm back where I need to be. Let's close with, uh, I was going to tell you about this quadruple riching uh, deal. I do want to show you this video because it's a minute long and it explains it better than I can. So. According to folklore, those who practiced witchcraft were especially strong and active during short periods of time, which created the term witching hour. In a financial context, quadruple witching refers to the day on which contracts for stock index futures, stock index options, stock options, and single stock futures expire. The financial witching hour is traditionally the last hour of trading on those days, during which transactions reach a peak. Stock options contracts expire on the third Friday of each month. And once every quarter, all four asset classes expire on the same day, the third Friday of March, June, September, and December. Quadruple witching days are important because futures and options investors must close out of their positions on these days, typically causing frenzied market activity. Investors usually brace for the increased trading volume and volatility that accompanies quadruple witching days by selling off positions and repurchasing contracts. Okay, so if you're actually listening to all of that, I know it's boring, it's like a little uh, eighth grade uh, presentation there. Um, but the, you know, if you're listening, 
Uh, one thing you might have heard is options traders have to close their positions and then reopen them. Uh, kind of. Um, obviously, a lot of people in the room here own options, and we don't have to sell out of them today and rebuy them back, right? We've been holding them for months. Uh, and, you know, in case of the long term options called leaps, um, we hold them for over a year sometimes. So you don't necessarily have to hop in and buy them. But if you are a trader, uh, this is where you're going to run into the you know, monthly expirations where everything kind of happens. So what happens on these Fridays is tends the volatility to be, tends to be pretty high. Um, so therefore, uh, you know, expect kind of a, a crap show in that last hour of trading on a Friday afternoon. For a long-term investor, you care not at all. Uh, for a short-term investor, if you want to get in on these, um, you know, Friday moves, similar to the open, which is why we use our particular system, is I know I'm going to get movement out of these stocks. It may work against me, and if so, I'm down 1R. If it works for me, I am up 3R. I know mathematically that I only have to be right more than one-fourth of the time to be able to make money with that system. You can also use that system or a similar system that's math-based on that last hour of these quadruple witching things because stocks are going to move because there's a whole bunch of buying and selling like you would normally see at the open. So uh, that's all we have for today. Hopefully the new format uh, was uh, tolerable uh, to y'all and we will catch up with you uh, next time. Have a good one.